Hey team, it's Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing great. You got a fun, great video with a nice comeback with the Haragumo, my favorite destroyer for gunboating, um, for rapid fire gunboating, if you will. I mean, this is the pretty much DPM ship, if you will call it. Uh, build is on the screen. As you can see, it's just IFHE build with fastest guns you can get uh, for a destroyer. So I think these are the fastest guns, honestly, in all of the DD lines, uh, the Haragumo. The only problem with this uh, battleship, of course, is, I'm sorry, <laughs> this destroyer, of course, is it doesn't have a heel and the concealment is not as great as others, but it does what it's supposed to do, which is literally just a gunship platform. So again, I appreciate it. Uh, all you guys have uh, helping out the channel as well, up to 400 subscribers, where that's our next goal. Uh, we've been growing like a wildfire and it's pretty awesome. Appreciate all the comments, likes, and support as well. Again, I can't thank you enough and we're having a blast doing it, building the community. So, here Gumo. We already explained to me why it's so fun. It's the pretty much a gunship in my opinion. Uh, the most rapid firing guns I can think of, especially if you get the Yamato or Yamamoto commander skill perk. To, it's called Divine Wind or whatever you want to call it. If you get five kills of cracking this thing, the guns are the fastest in the Wild West. This is pretty much the craziest destroyer I've ever seen in my life uh, regarding guns. I don't know if this really could happen in reality, the amount of firepower it brings to bear. But So we're going to go get spotted right now. Again, see the spotting is not as great as the Shimikaze. It outspots us, but eventually if you uh, drag it in close enough, we start going into battle, which we know we can melt a Shimikaze no big deal. Uh, the only problem is we don't have any radar, we don't have any kind of ability to spot. I wish I was on the small one right now with my radar, just to pop the radar, the tactic is let them smoke up, wait, and then pop the radar, as you can see right here, but that doesn't work. So we pop our smoke, because he's in smoke, he can't spot us. We pop smoke, everybody behind us can't see us. That's the tactic right there. Wait for him to pop smoke, then pop smoke, and then we go quiet. We also provide a smoke screen for our brothers in arms behind us. So now what we're gonna do is the only thing to do in this situation is the nose in. Really just to go nose in towards the Shima because either he's launched torps and we can basically dodge it by being less of a broadside, more slim profile. But we also have a Shima on our right. Our teammate Shima is going to uh, help us spot as well because he's ahead of us. His spotting distance is a lot better than us. Our concealment is uh, about 6.2. The Shima, I believe, you can get it down to 5.8-ish or maybe lower. Um, the gearing gets down to, I think, with the legendary or maybe some kind of module that allows it to go. The gearing, the USS Destroyer Tier 10, also can get down to the 5.6 something range. Uh, again, forgive me if that's wrong, but it's pretty darn uh, less than 6, if you will. But ours is 6.2, so just keep that in mind uh, when, when you're going up against these pretty low concealment uh, destroyers. It's always great to have a, uh, another friend that can outspot uh, ahead of you. And, th and that helps out as well. And I, I like staying, and I've found this tactic to be really helpful is to support your other DDs. I mean, I know everybody wants to go off and do their own thing. I find it lately, I've been trying to pick a DD and stick with them. I mean, more two versus one is better than one versus one. And, and that seems to be working out really, really well, especially in ranked. I see, look at here, the Summers is being spotted by the Shima. His attention is probably focused on the Shima right now. So let's see. Yep, he fires at the Shima. That means nobody's looking at us and we just open fire with our fastest firing guns possible. I mean, look at the reload of the 2.0 with the Commander build. We are basically using that perk at the bottom there. Commander skill is uh, basically minus 10% on the gun reload, which is pretty incredible. Summer smokes up when we catch the attention of the Austin. And you know what? We fire preemptive torpedoes and see if he goes right into them. He seems to be trending towards us. But then he is showing broadside to a lot of our uh, ships, especially Montana to, Montana to the south. So guess what? He's probably going to do what I would have done, which is turn away. Yep, there he is. He gets slapped right there. Exactly. So he's like, oh, crap, I'm running away. I just, I like to open up because, you know what? Hopefully I can melt this guy from 6,000 health. If he keeps his trajectory, I hope I can melt him in time. And he goes undetected. So it doesn't really help right there. So we like to stop firing. 20 second timer started for us to go hidden again. So we are now going to turn back around because I've lost sight of the Shima. I don't know where he's at. So therefore, at least he's not spotting us, but I don't want to mess with him because he could have, he has three salvo torpedoes that I can't see. I don't have hydro, I have no way to spot. Uh, I have nobody out in front of me spotting. So it's probably better just to aim towards the back to the epicenter and head towards and support the Shima, uh, our friendly Shima that way. Summers is spotted again, and we are now going to go support the Shima to help him out. I know I'm being located right now, which means I'm the closest thing to the, uh, I believe the Shima is the one that had the RPF. So 
I, that, that's also a good indication. You see the top right of my cursor there is located. That means I'm being spotted by a, uh, either the Austin or the Shima. Now there he is, the smoke is ahead of us right there. I know where the Shima is now. He is way off in the distance, and at least I know I'm the closest thing to him, uh, as opposed to our friendly Shima. And that's a, another counter indicator to RPF. So yeah, friends are pinging. Uh, we're gonna ping the Austin and the Shima are over there. I let the, our team know that. And now we're heading back to the epicenter to start capping that to get more points. Now you think this game is pretty much in the bag. We got everybody out of their epicenter. We're gonna cap the middle and we're up by 145 points. You think the game is over, but hold on. Uh, I've seen different games go uh, pretty uh, astray here where you think you're in the lead and all of a sudden you lose five, four, four or five ships in a row. And that's pretty much what almost happens in this game. We pretty much lose the majority of our team and it's just down to just the mighty few. So our first, uh, I like to basically take out the first target that's the on the flank, which is the Napoli. Hopefully we can uh, bombard him. But it looks actually like the Napoli is gonna be taken out by the Des Moines. Now look at the Des Moines health. It's pretty high up there, right? And ouch. He gets taken pretty hard, and at least he gets an Napoli with his fast firing guns, which he basically probably loaded AP and hit the broadside of him. Nice now, we are down both sides, two ships with 13 Torpedo minutes left in the game, and we have a Shimakaze spot in the distance. We know where he is. Like, oh, holy crap, Torpedo. here come the 16 and a half torpedoes. Now, I assume these torpedoes would run out, but don't assume anything. These are probably the long range torpedoes because look how slow they're going, and we're gonna have to turn hard right here. Here's the technique, slam on the brakes, swing that tail out, and speed up again. Whoa. That was a crazy dodge right there. I didn't think I'd make it. This thing turns like a truck. I mean, the Hiragumo is a long, kind of like a mini cruiser, if you will. I mean, to turn this thing takes literally a godsend. So we did our best there. We almost died and screwed up our team victory here, but uh, you know what? We did it, we survived. Let's get over it, move on. New and going next, we have an Ohio on Montana, and oh my gosh, another battleship. I mean, they have three battleships on this side. This is pretty ridiculous. I don't think the Des Moines can handle all three by himself, so we're going to launch torpedoes going that way, and another set of torpedoes through the middle of that island. So torpedoes on both sides, hopefully one of them hits and gets this thing done. But you know what? Torpedoes are not our bread and butter. The bread and butter of this destroyer is the gun. So let's see if we can get an optimal firing range right here. Got the pop smoke, and let's see if we can start farming somebody. So let's pick, first victim is the good old Montaigne. Montaigne is just sailing straight at us, providing a ju nice juicy target straight in, and hopefully we kill this guy. And IFHE build is awesome because it melts anything with 32 you know, uh, millimeters of armor or less. So, and again, it still starts fires. I don't know what people say, oh, I lower the firing chance. You know what, it doesn't matter. If you pump out a thousand rounds a minute, I mean, you, you're gonna start a fire no matter what. Just keep aiming at the target and hold down the melt button. I don't care. I don't understand why people are so addicted to the fire chance when, dude, it's gonna start a fire as long as you keep shooting. I mean, if you don't shoot, nothing happens. So fire chances, again, it's just a chance. It's a percentage, which means that just means, just like the Santa crates and everything, just buy more Santa crates and eventually the percentage gives in just like anything. So I always like IFHE. I want to penetrate the maximum amount of armor that I can, especially in a fast firing gunboat. As you can see right here, Ohio is not really uh, mitigating our damage very well. We're just gonna keep melting and melting and melting. He only needs to melt 7,000 armor, or HP that is. He's down to 2,000 HP and boom, Montaigne gets the slap and switching next target to Montaigne. So Montaigne has 61,000 health. We're basically gonna melt him as best we can and let's see how much we can do. There, there's a fire. See, it doesn't matter. Just keep firing as best you can. He probably damaged cons. I think, nope, he's still got the fire going. And sorry about the lag, the computer is lagging. I don't know what lately is going on with the, the uh, server, but it's been lagging, so it's hard to record. Notice our 32 uh, millimeter damaging IFHE shells are getting all through that. Uh, some of his bows about 50 millimeter around his other areas of his ship, but I think his bow and main uh, superstructure is good enough for us to penetrate the max amount of damage. I like to go out on my smoke because the smoke's about to die and I'm trying to get a good broadside over here to stay away from his guns because I don't want his guns to fire. They're looking at me, they're looking at me, and boom, he is down. Thank you, Mon other Montana for killing us and we're gonna start shooting the Shimakaze right here. Hopefully one of our shells can land, get a dev strike or something, that'd be cool. Montana is the last battleship that will, oh, wait a second. Our Montana dies. We only have a Smolensk left. So hopefully Mosense can stay alive and help us out here. We've fired a couple of 
torpedoes in the channel. Now here's where it gets very interesting here. Now they have a Schlieffen, which is my favorite battleship now for secondaries, uh, but it is pretty crazy, but you can actually, like I've been telling my team, is if you want to take out a Schlieffen, just stay at a distance and spam HE. Melt the thing to death, that's its counter weakness. Now, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get within Schlieffen gun range and melt him while keeping the Shima at bay in this little channel or this little narrow uh, pathway, if you will. And we also have the Austin to face. So we have three, and there's the Austin right there. He pops up on my mini map in a distance. I outspot him. We're gonna see if we can get it. Now here's a tactic I've, I've learned about uh, from the other DD players. Let's see if we can get him to turn into one of our torpedoes. So we start firing. So in order to get his guns aimed at us, like his front guns are okay, he wants all six. So he's gonna turn and get all of his guns facing us, which is his fatal mistake. Boom, right into that torpedo and we pop smoke right away to go undetected and we are going to farm the Schlieffen as best we can. We're looking at the score right here. It's always good to know the score. 910 points which means we just have to eliminate a battleship to get us a little bit more in the lead and that way we don't have to worry about the Shima. He's out of the picture. Our other Shima spotting us. This is a great tactic here for any of you playing in a division or ranked or anything. Have your Shima or somebody that doesn't really have many guns to spot for you while they're using their torpedoes and we are on the other hand using our guns in the smoke. So we have an all-time spotter and we have a smoke screen to help us stay for about a good one minute and 19, one minute and 30 seconds, which is pretty awesome. So we started about 1.30, now we got about another minute of just spamming. I mean, we just, look at all these shells are pretty much um, melting the Schlieffen, who, who doesn't have really good armor, actually. I mean, I think some of the armor is about 25-ish, 26 millimeters, and the main trooper structure is 19. So anywhere we hit along the, the, the main deck right there is going to melt, like you're seeing right now. We're getting 396, 396, 396, over and over again. And over time, this becomes a problem for him because he has nothing to do, he has nothing to mitigate the damage. I mean, he can't, I mean, his heals are cool, but if you keep getting fires and full pen damages here, they don't really help. So here we go, just listen to the gunfire. Sound of freedom right here. Ah, listen to the sweet sound of victory right there. I love this gunboat, especially when you get all the perks kicking in and it goes to super fast reload. But we saved the day right there. Thanks to the Shima and us, we win the game. Almost took a loss right there. It's pretty scary. But anyways, hope you guys liked the video. Comment, like, subscribe. Appreciate all the support. Getting to 400 uh, subscribers. And again, until next time, see you guys soon. Stay safe. Cheers.